we will now take up the internal structure of the kidney the external structure the location everything we have seen so now when we take a longitudinal section of kidney what all things are visible this is what we are talking about so this is ls longitudinal section of kidney so now let us see we are drawing the outer layer that is the capsule and this capsule is the fibrous capsule it is known as the renal capsule outside this there is a fat layer so we'll draw this fat layer also which is outside this it is known as renal fat renal fat layer and the outermost is again a fibrous tissue which is known as renal fascia so we have seen all these structures but because we are talking of the internal structure also let us draw these things so this outermost is renal fascia now when we see the internal part the internal part of kidney is divided into two zones the outer zone is known as a renal cortex and we want to show many things inside and that is why we are highlighting this part so this outer red dotted band or area which we are showing here is renal cortex renal cortex this is the outer area and the inner area is the medullary area or renal medulla so i'm going to erase couple of things little later but this is the inner one and this part is what we are talking about as renal medulla now in this medulla we see some triangular pyramid shaped structures and these pyramids are in a man in a particular manner that means the outer wider area is in the cortex like this and the narrower area is here so this is the pyramid that we are talking of similarly one more pyramid and because these pyramids are present in the medullary region they are known as medullary pyramids or renal pyramids so these are these pyramid like areas that we have drawn in the medullary region so i'm erasing this inner part so there are two bands outer is the cortex and inner is medulla so these pyramid shape structures which are visible these are called renal pyramids or medullary pyramids so there are many such pyramids and as you can see the broader part is towards the cortex and the narrower part is towards the central region which we call the renal pelvis so if we draw this pyramid like this shape is conical and that is why we are calling it renal pyramid this broad part is towards cortex and this narrow part is towards the pelvis renal pelvis and this narrow region of the pyramid is known as renal papilla it is called renal papilla the narrow portion so all these narrow portions these are renal papillae now how is this structure formed that we will understand once we see the structure of nephron now what happens here is the cortex it sort of so, sort of penetrates or goes in between these renal papillae or sorry renal pyramids so there are bands of cortex which are going in so let us erase this part now so here there are bands of cortex which have penetrated in between these 
pyramids. So I'm making one more pyramid here so that the structure becomes clear. So this is another pyramid and these narrow parts, as we say, they are known as renal papillae. And in between this cortex, which was outside, this cortex goes in. So there is a band of cortex which is going in between these renal pyramids. These bands of cortex, they are known as columns of Bertini. So they are called columns of Bertini, these inner ones. So here this inner band is actually column of Bertini. So these are bands of columns of cortex which have penetrated in between these pyramid-like structures. So there are two distinct bands. The outer band is the renal cortex. The inner band, now where we are seeing these pyramids is the renal medulla. As we have drawn these structures, I have erased that arrow here. So this inner part was the medulla. In the medullary region, we are seeing these pyramids and because they are seen in the medullary region, we call them renal pyramids. We have drawn these pyramids here and a formation of these pyramids we will see later. In between the pyramids extends a band of cortex. So this cortex extends in between these pyramids. And these bands of cortex are known as columns of Bertini. Now these ends, actually we have shown, <coughs> sorry, we have shown the structure like this, but it opens. That means here these are going to open into This is the renal papillae. So, <coughs> these renal papillae, they open into a structure, a tubular structure. So, suppose this is one tubular structure. This is the other one which is coming from here. The third one which is coming from here. These are known as minor <coughs> calyx. So, here also we will draw those minor calyces. So this is one tube which is collecting from a couple of pyramids. This is another tube which is collecting again from some pyramids. And they open into a bigger tube. So similarly, there would be many joining. So what has happened is there are smaller tubes which are collecting all that liquid which is going to come from here, this is known as minor calyx. And many minor calyces would join to form one major calyx. So uh, let me just do it one more time so that we understand. There are smaller tubes which are coming from various ends. These smaller tubes join to form bigger. Again, few smaller tubes they would join to form a bigger tube. So these smaller tubes are known as minor calyces. Single is minor calyx and many of them together are known as minor calyces. And all these minor calyces, they open to form a bigger structure. So there would be one coming from here, another coming from here. So these bigger ones, these are the major calyx. This is clearer in this part. So from the pyramids, the liquid, the nephric filtrate which is going to come, which ultimately will change into urine, comes here. So from pyramids, all those pyramids, they pour it into narrower tubes. They are minor calyces. And from minor calyces, many uh, open into major calyces. So there are normally two to three major calyces. Now I'm going to erase this again and we will draw the structure slightly different. Here we said there is going to be the funnel-like opening of ureter. 
So what exactly pours the secretion or not the secretion, the filtrate into the ureter? So say this is one opening, this is another opening and say this is one more opening. So we are showing one, two and three big openings here, opening into this broad part which is known as the renal pelvis. And how have they formed? They have formed by fusion of few more smaller roots. Similarly here, they have been formed by fusion of few smaller ones. So these smaller ones are the minor calyces, the bigger ones are the major calyces and they open into this broad area which is known as the renal pelvis. And renal pelvis opens into this tube which is called the ureter. So basically in the structure what we are seeing is there are outer three layers. If we go from inside out, there is a fibrous capsule, then there is a fat layer and then there is again a fibrous layer which is renal fascia. Coming inside, two distinct zones. The outer zone is cortex, inner zone is medulla. In the medullary region, we find some pyramid-like structures and these pyramid-like structures are known as renal pyramids or medullary pyramids as they are present in the medullary region. And we can see here that the cortex, it goes in between these renal pyramids. These bands of cortex, they are known as columns of Bertini. These renal pyramids, they pour the collected liquid into some minor, smaller tubes, which are called minor calyces. Minor calyces join to form major calyces. And there are normally two, three major calyces which open into renal pelvis. So basically, the kidneys, they collect the filtrate from all different nephrons and with the help of all these tubes, they are poured into the ureter. And the ureter is going to take it to the bladder. So when we see the longitudinal section, this is what we see. And now when we come to the structure of nephron, now we would be able to understand that which part of the nephron is in the cortical region and which part comes into the medullary region. So this is the internal structure of the kidney.